Welcome guys, welcome back to our channel with Celsec and today we're doing the Evo hijacking attack and this is gonna be the first episode of the series of T-Client testing and T-Client is pretty much that desktop apps which are outdated but are still encountered inside companies for maybe finance purposes, accounting purposes or backing softwares so it's pretty much all that Windows clients using forms, using .NET or Visual Basic and the test is quite simple similar as the mobile or web when you need to find vulnerabilities such as SQL injection but there are specific ones such as DLL hijacking and we're gonna card that now so for demo I'm using that DVTA thing and apparently DVTA is a vulnerable T client if we google DVTA we can navigate to its github and there's a bunch of instructions how to set up what software it requires we can see .NET 4.5 also we need SQL and FTP server there are videos, instructions and what I did now is just downloaded the latest release here in from the zip file and it comes with its source code so we can either open it with uh, Visual Studio and just try to analyze, modify, find the vulnerabilities what we're gonna do next time pretty much so I'm gonna go with source code analysis too but for now we are focusing on the pre-compiled binaries which inside dvta dvta uh, bin folder then we have release and here we have the application so if you run it i didn't set up myself that mssql or ftp so nothing else is gonna happen but for the error injection it's not needed so let me just show you what i mean the error injection is pretty much when the software you're running requires a dll and it tries to find it on a place where it's missing and if we have the right to pretty much write files to that directory we can pretty much compile our own dll place it there with the name it requires and then execute code based on the dll function inside you can generate dll using various of ways for example you can manually call it using c or you can use msf venom to generate a malicious dll payload so here the first step is to pretty much analyze and as in general scan for vulnerabilities and how to scan for the DLL injection hijacking sorry is pretty much you open post monitor from sys internals and then monitor what this process is doing and requires so let me just show you real quick open sys internals if you're not sure about what sys internals is let me just do sys internals download go to here and just download it from there and it's pretty much a uh, suite for for making your administrative tasks easier for example there is two like uh, tcp view which pretty much shows all the processes which are doing tcp connections of course this can be done with nestat but you're gonna need the, the permissions for seeing which process is doing what so we have that procmon 64 which is pretty much a monitor for all the process and it's a more detailed monitor it's not like a task manager because you can see a process here as well but uh, when we want that there are pretty much all the processes our system have so if i let me just clear my filters which are saved from the previous attempts we can see all the process in my system you can see a lot of data and we can see each process the actions of each process for example svc host is doing rec query value that specific registry and we have the result of name not found so it tries to get something done but it wasn't able to find it so that the resulting here is is crucial finding devil hijacking vulnerabilities because we want to see that we want to see if the app is requesting a custom DLL name, not the Windows one, because we generally don't have permissions to write inside the Windows folder. But if that requests a DLL inside a custom directory, most likely in the same directory as the app, and if the name is not found, or even if found, but this can corrupt the whole application. So uh, let's try now to set up some filters. Just quit our application there, and then we have. Our filters which is process name begins with dvta because that's how our process name is starting and then we have the pad contains dll so we want to see all the process with the name dvta and all the pad that contains dll so then when we apply that filter now we want to pretty much clear it and rerun the whole application 
So let me just tab it. And by the way, we can see a lot of things happened. So most, most of the times you are requesting, as I said before, Windows uh, DLLs. And we want to avoid that. Because as I said, we don't have access to write on them. So let's scroll a little bit down and try to search for uh, custom permissions uh, for, for custom DLL. So we have one here. We have EOSEC desktop DVTA, DVTA being released, LDP.DLL. This can work. So let's try proof API. We have crypt S sp.dll so all of these most likely work so let's try with that proof api so to do that it's we first need to know that the path so the path is inside desktop dvta dvta bin release proof api which apparently our directory of the same application we started we can see dvta dvta bin release and we need to place the file here so let's go to my copy box and let me log in real quick. Come on. Well, that is being loading. I want to see pretty much what was the syntax for DLLs. The exact payload. So let's see to desktop. MSF Venom. What was it? Let me just let me just Google it. MSF Venom. DLL and come on. All right, there we have it. So MS7 on format DLL payload Windows exec, and we have the CMD which is going to be cow.exe. So keep in mind that this CMD can be anything, it can be like a custom c2 as we described in the previous video and by the way if you haven't watched it you can see it right here or it can be a different payload for example windows interpreter windows shell which is going to give us a web shell back but now just for testing purposes we want to pop up cow.exe now let's call that what was the name proof api maybe it's like a uh, proof api yeah proof api all right, and the next thing we want to try and keep note that is the architecture of the process. So here, if we go with the task major, for example, we can see that the DVTA is 32 bits. So we can try that because I think by default it's using 32 bits uh, payload. But if we want to specify 64, we need to do like Windows X64, then exec. So I think that by definition, this payload is going to be for 32 bit process. So let's try it out. Run that command and it's going to generate a malicious DLL file, which is going to trigger the calculator right, right up. Give it a little seconds. Come on. And it's done. All right. So the next step is to pretty much download it but for that case we must have right access to our folder otherwise we will not be able to write our custom DLL inside so let's try just to create a new file and we can see we can so let's delete that open up a partial window cd desktop dvta dvta what was it bin release all right and I'll do like invoke web request, HTTP, the IP is the same. And I'll do like, what was it? Proof API.dll and do out file, proof API.dll. Now the file is being stored. And now the next step is to pretty much restart the application, restart post monitor, and see what's gonna happen. So now let's close that, open it up again. And we can see ins instead of that DVTA, we have a calculator being popped up. If we inspect the post monitor, we can see that there's a slightly lesser registry that we pretty much requested, slightly less work files, works, I can say. So let's try to navigate there to see the exact call of our custom proof API. 
Come on, don't, don't make me use the filter again for that. It's only see windows here. So let's try. Oh, there it is. So now we have, instead of like not found as we had before, we have all of course that prof API and most of them was like success. So that indicates that it found it and pretty much that's why we were able to execute that calc.txe. So of course you can play with the payloads, but keep in mind that that there can be some AV here and if you want to play some interpreter it's not gonna work because it's genuinely have a trigger for all kind of metasploit payloads. So either use something custom or something that can evade antivirus because this is just a technology and the technique behind the hijacking and that was the full video so i hope you enjoyed and in the next video we're gonna continuing our t client testing we're gonna, we're gonna try to set up our ftp client and our mssql try some sql injections and other kind of vulnerabilities i know it should be fun so see you right in the next one